Oh, the joys of being a beginner drummer. The possibilities are endless. Now you can finally fulfill your lifelong dream and sound just like your favorite drummers. So you sit behind the kit for the first time and start playing. Oh wow, this kick drum thing is hard. Am I supposed to cross my arms here? What is this called? What do I do with that? Ow, this kind of hurts my ears. This is ears. hard. Oh crap, oh, my yeah, 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 yeah. Is playing drums like, actually impossible? Impossible? Yeah, I quit. Being a beginner drummer is a journey for sure. I know it can feel super overwhelming trying to remember everything that you're supposed to do behind the kit. But don't worry, today I'm gonna help you avoid some of those really common mistakes so that you can make more progress behind the kit while totally avoiding some of these roadblocks. And that all starts with mistake number one. One of the first mistakes that I see a lot of beginner drummers make is they only focus on speed. First of all, there are so many things that you need to develop to get faster, like your technique, like your muscle development, like your pattern memorization, there's a lot more that goes into speed than you might think. But on top of that, when we are only focused on speed, we are always trying to push things as fast as we can possibly go. When most of the growth from our beats and our fills and exercises comes when we practice them at a very slow tempo. This gives our brain time to digest what we are doing and be able to fix those small mistakes that we would miss if we were just flying through the beat. The second mistake is I notice a lot of beginner drummers grip their sticks too tightly. This can make you incredibly tense while you're playing, which can just make it hard to play in general. Not to mention that when you are gripping way too tight, it makes your drums sound a lot worse as well. So I always encourage people to have a firm fulcrum between your pointer finger and your thumb, but to let the rest of your fingers rest on your drumstick so you can stay nice and relaxed so you can play comfortably and get the best sound out of your drums. The third mistake that beginner drummers make is having the most bizarre drum setups. Now, I guess I'm just gonna talk throughout the rest of this point with my drums like this, because I've really committed here. Now, if your drums and cymbals are spaced out really far and tilted at really extreme angles, well, it might actually make it harder for you to comfortably play the drum set. Now, while we all have our different preferences, it is definitely worth taking the time to set up everything in the most comfortable way possible. What is going to be the easiest to play around the drum set? And what is going to be the easiest way for you to reach and hit your cymbals? These are all things to consider when you are setting up your kit. Number four is a lot of beginner drummers tend to ignore the things that get them stuck. For example, if you run into a beat that really challenges your coordination, most beginner drummers will just give up on it and move past it rather than really taking the time to work on it so you can improve those weaknesses. So let me give you a quick beginner coordination test. Why don't you try playing this beat with quarter notes, snare on two and four, and then the kick on beats one, and then the and of two and the and of three. It sounds like this. Now I want you to try to get that beat up to 100 BPMs. If you already can, that is awesome. But if you can't, I want you to take the time to really concentrate on this beat and focus on it until you can get it up to 100 beats per minute. Number five is a lot of beginner drummers ignore their timing. I know so many of us are really focused on trying to learn specific beats and specific fills and maybe even certain rudiments, but something that we forget is to play those beats and fills and rudiments in time with a metronome. Now, one great way to test your timing is to turn the metronome on and for one measure, play quarter notes, the next measure, play eighth notes, and the third measure, play 16th notes and keep repeating that pattern. If you are able to stay in time through those subdivision changes, well, then you are probably in pretty good shape. But if you are struggling with it, then keep working on that exercise because it will really improve your timing. Number six is most beginner drummers never play with other musicians or get feedback on their drumming. I know so many of us are uncomfortable behind the kit and maybe even embarrassed. But trust me, if you open yourself up to play with any musician friends that you have, or even non-musician friends, you just play for them or play in front of them, 
getting that honest feedback is going to help you see some of your mistakes and improve upon them. If you can't find anyone to play with or play for, well, then video is your best friend. You can set up your phone and take a video of maybe you working on one of your drum beats and you can analyze from a little bit more of an objective state to see what type of things you can improve. Seventh mistake is, that was a five. The seventh mistake is a lot of beginner drummers ignore dynamics. Now dynamics is referring to how loud or how soft you hit your drums. I've seen a lot of beginner drummers that can only play like this. And then I've seen a lot of other beginner drummers that can only play like this. The key here is to be able to play both quiet and loud and everything in between and be able to control those dynamics. So if you've got a drum beat down, that is awesome. Maybe now it's time to focus on if you control playing it quiet and then also playing it loud. I've noticed that a lot of beginner drummers forget to have fun behind the drum set. A lot of us are so busy working on these exercises, these beats, that it gets very methodical and we forget why we actually started playing the drums. And that is because it is an absolute blast. So make sure at the end of any practice session that you have to leave five minutes to just have fun behind the kit, whether that's playing with headphones and listening to your favorite song, or just jamming out, trying to create something new. We always wanna be reminded of why we love this instrument. So I would highly recommend that you do that. The ninth mistake is a lot of beginner drummers never unglue their hands from their feet, or in other words, never really focus or work on their coordination. Trust me, I know the drums can feel uncomfortable in the beginning and your hands and your feet wanna do the exact same thing. But if you aren't actively working on exercises to unglue your hands from your feet, then you're probably not gonna make much progress. Now here is a great exercise to get you started on working on your hand and feet coordination a little bit. Check it out. And finally, the biggest mistake that beginner drummers make on the drum set is they quit. Yeah, I quit. Like I've said, being a beginner drummer is not for the week. It is a journey. Every single day, you're working hard to get better, no matter how uncomfortable you feel. Unfortunately, because it is a journey, some people decide to quit before they ultimately get to the place that they wanna be. Now with drums, we just have to keep taking baby steps forward each and every day. And eventually, we will be able to look back and really see all the progress that we made, even though in the day to day, I know it can feel like a struggle, like we haven't made progress or we've even lost progress. But trust me, every time you spend behind the kit, you are making small progress forward. All right, so there are 10 mistakes that I notice beginner drummers make all the time. If you wanna go more in depth with this and start feeling more comfortable behind the drum kit, I actually created a full course called the Become a Drummer in 30 Days course. This takes you from just picking up sticks for the very first time to playing along to your very first song, all within 30 days in this 20 lesson course. Now this is available for all members of DBO Academy. Unfortunately, doors aren't open right now, but if you join the wait list right up here, I will send you a free lesson from this course that will help you improve your coordination. Seriously, it's really cool. For everyone who's taking that next step, I will see you in the DBO Academy wait list. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching this lesson and I will see you in more videos. Stay true and I'll see you next time. Bye.